This tutorial explores using PDF files and the various tools available in Adobe Acrobat. We will learn how to combine different files into a single PDF document. Then we will edit the file and add security features to the PDF document in Adobe Acrobat. PDF stands for Portable Document Format. It is a reliable format for presenting, printing, and sharing documents, independent of software, hardware, or operating system. In the Canvas module for the Acrobat Lab, download the zipped file. Zipping compresses multiple documents into one single file. Compressing creates smaller file sizes that are easier to share. Zipped files must be unzipped to restore the original files. Many browsers will do this automatically, otherwise double-clicking on a zipped file will expand the folder. I'll click the download the zipped file, and a lot of browsers will put a thumbnail shortcut to get to that location that you can click. Otherwise, you can navigate into your download folder and locate the file that says acrobatlab.zip. What we need to do is extract the files that are compressed inside this zipped file so that we can access them. On a Mac, you can just double click the file and it will expand the contents. On a PC, if I double click it, now I see I have an extract all button available and I can tell it to extract to the same folder and to ex show the extracted files when completed. Click the Extract button. And now when I open up that Acrobat Lab folder, I can see I have four different documents inside of here. I have a PDF, a TIFF, a JPEG, and a PNG. We'll combine these four documents into one single PDF. Open up the program Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. This is what the main workspace looks like. From here I can open files, I can modify how I want my tools to be available inside of Acrobat. And I can also create and combine files here. Let's go up to the File menu at the top, down to Create, Combine Files into a Single PDF. You can click the Add Files and navigate into your Download folder. I know I still have that window open on my computer here. So what I can do is select those four files that were downloaded, and I can drag and drop them onto the Acrobat workspace. We can also rearrange the order of the documents in this window. Now if I hover over the Acrobat Study Guide PDF, there's actually two different pages in there. So they are nested on top of each other because two pages in that original document. So we'll have the Acrobat Study Guide PDF documents go first, pages one and two. And then we'll move the page thumbnails.jpg to page three. And you can see that blue tick mark as I move. So that's indicating where that document's going to be placed. And we'll have the edit PDF Acrobat.tiff will be page four. And signatures Acrobat.png will be page five. So we are all ready to combine the files. Locate the blue combine button in the top right corner. And now I can see that I have a five page document. I can zoom out a little bit and I can also scroll through 
each one of those pages. So they're all different size documents and they were all different formats, but now they're together in one single PDF file. So before we make any additional changes, we should save this document. I can see that it automatically names it binder1.pdf. So let's go up to the file menu at the top, down to save as. You can click the blue button at the bottom, choose a different folder. Navigate into your Adobe Design Suite folder and we'll make a new folder. Title this new folder Lab03 dash Acrobat. And then open that folder. I can see at the bottom, save as type is set to Adobe PDF files PDF, and that's the format that we want. So I'm going to highlight just binder one, and I'll keep the .pdf file extension in there. I would like you to name this with your last name, dash zero three, dash acrobat dot pdf. Click the save button. Now I can see that this tab is renamed with the file name that we just gave it. Let's take a look at the workspace. You'll notice on both the left and right sides of your screen there are little triangles that can be clicked to expand or collapse these sidebars. On the sidebar on the left, the very top icon there is for our page thumbnails. So we can see all of the pages we have in here and we can do any commands in here like moving pages around, replacing, inserting, and deleting pages from here. I'll click that arrow to collapse that. And on the right sidebar, if you expand that, you'll see the different tools we have available in Acrobat. The first set of revisions that we'll make to this document are going to be found in the Edit PDF set of tools. After clicking the Edit PDF button, I can see in the upper middle section of my workspace, I have the Edit PDF toolbar available. So we can do some basic editing commands in here. We can add text, we can replace text, add images, we can add some hyperlinks, crop pages, and apply some other commands. Now, if it was a total reconstruction of a document, I'd probably want to go back to the original native document to make those changes. But there are a lot of these functions available very easily right inside of Adobe Acrobat. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit on page one, and you can see you have a plus and minus up here in the command bar. And now I need to recenter my page. I will zoom in to the upper area of page one, and we'll start off by changing Jane Doe to read our names. So I can click inside the box that says Jane Doe, and I will select all that text and I can replace it with my name. And I can see that the text frame isn't big enough. So if I hover my cursor over the left middle handle of this box, I can drag it out so that 
it all fits on one line. I clicked four times to select my entire name. And on the right sidebar, you'll see different formatting options. So I could change the font, font size, color. I could add some bold, italic, underline. You've got your alignments and all of your basic formatting that's used for characters. Let's go down to where it says Spring 2015, and we'll change this to read the current semester, which is Fall 2020. And maybe I want them to both have their right edges aligned. So what I can do here is when I hover over the text frame and I see that full crosshair on my cursor, that's when I can take that whole text frame and I can adjust it. Okay, let's save our document as we go along. You can go up to File, Save. We already told it what we wanted it named as and where we wanted it saved to. Now we're going to replace this image of the sunset there with one of our own images. So I'll select the frame that this image is sitting in and I can right click and locate replace image Navigate into your Adobe Design Suite folder and locate the Photo Library folder. And I'd like you to choose a new image, one of your own, to replace in here. So select that image and then click Open. We'll want to save our document again. Next, we'll add a link to the image that we just replaced. So up in the Edit PDF command bar, you're going to locate Link. If I click that arrow, I can add Edit Web or Document Link. Now, it kind of feels like that didn't do anything, but you'll notice that your cursor is now a crosshair. So what it wants you to do is draw a selection around the text or the images that you want the link applied to. So I will click and hold down my mouse to make a selection in the picture here. And then a create link box opens up. So you can specify what you want that link type to look like. Do you want it to be a visible rectangle or an invisible? I can choose visible. And from there you can choose what type of line style it's set in, solid, dashed, or underlined. I'll do a dashed. You could change the highlight style so that when it's clicked on, it will invert your image or outline. I'll tell it to invert, and you could also change the thickness of the line. Next, we'll go down to the link actions. What do we want this link to do? Do we want it to go to a different page view in the document? Do we want it to open a file attachment? Maybe open a web page or make a custom link? we are going to select open a web page and then click next. Here it wants you to enter a URL for this link. What I normally recommend you doing is opening up the website that you want to create the link from. Go up to the web address bar and select the entire address and copy it from there. We're going to do a simple 
URL link to McHenry County College. So we can type in www.mchenry.edu. We'll click OK. And now I can see that highlighted line around my image. I can adjust it a little bit if I need to. And now we should check the link just to make sure that it works. We do need to close out of the Edit PDF Tools to do this. So you'll see on the right upper corner there's a button that says Close. Now when I hover over my image, I see my cursor changes and I can see the web link that we just put in there is showing up in the shortcut window. So if I click that image, it should open up a browser and it should bring up McHenry County College's homepage. I'll go back to Acrobat and we need to go back into the Edit PDF set of tools. So go ahead and click that on the right sidebar. And the last command we'll apply in here is a watermark. A watermark is text or an image that appears either in front of or behind existing document content. You can add multiple watermarks to one or more PDFs, but you must add each watermark separately. A watermark is integrated into the PDF pages as a fixed element. So it can be used as protection and security on your document because the author would be the only one that would be able to remove that watermark. Let's go up to the Edit PDF control panel to Watermark. Click the arrow next to it and then go down to Add. So you can choose what kind of source watermark you would like to apply, text or a file. So maybe your logo you would do with the file. In this tutorial, we'll just go with a text and I will click inside that text frame there and I'll just put my name. And I can see it showing up on the document in the preview area here. Now if I want to change the font color or font size, I could do that. I'm going to go down to the Appearance panel and apply a rotation to my watermark. So you could do negative or positive 45, a custom degree or none. You can adjust the opacity of your watermark so that it's more transparent or see-through. And scale relative to target page is a good idea, especially in this document, since this has different pages with different size documents in it. So that's telling me it will make the watermark 50% of the size that current page is on. So if I scroll down to the other pages here, you can see how it adjusts the size of that watermark accordingly. Now these first two pages in our document are considered text. So when I have the watermark appearing on top of the page, it's fine, I can still read my text through it. Let's go to Appear Behind page again, that's fine. But when I go to these original picture documents, it doesn't show that watermark through. It's more of a solid background there. So that's why on this particular document, we're going to have that watermark to appear on top of the page. Okay, let's click the OK button. 
and now you should be able to scroll through and see that watermark everywhere. Let's save the document and scroll down to page two. We'll apply some commenting edits to page two. So we're going to close the edit PDF toolbar and then in the right sidebar, locate comment. Now I see the comment command bar in the middle upper area of my workspace. And you can apply standard drawing markup tool proof edits to the document and it will list every single one of those comments over in the sidebar there. So it makes it very easy to keep track of all of those edits and be able to check off the ones you've done or see who's approved it. it gives you a lot of information in there. So the first one is add a sticky note. So I can click that icon and you can click it anywhere you want on page two. So if I want to move it, I can just click with the crosshair in there. And then if I double click it, it opens up a text box for me that I can write, add a new header to page two. Post. I can highlight text, underline text, I can do strike throughs, strike through with a sticky note, insert text. So go ahead and just grab at least two of those drawing markup tools. So I could select this next one and replace text with signatures post now we'll add a stamp to our document so locate that stamp icon and these are really cool there's some dynamic ones revised reviewed received approved and because we are signed in to our Adobe ID. It should give us that author information. We could do the date and time stamp on there, or you can go down to standard business and grab one of those more basic ones. Uh, this is asking me for my identity. Uh, information right there, which I am not going to do that part right now. I do have the approved stamp though, which I can click to apply. So this makes it very easy to be able to share documents and be able to get proofs and edits from multiple people, but keep it in a nice organized fashion. We can close out our comment tools and save our document. Another thing we can do is apply our digital signature. On the right sidebar, I'm going to fill and sign. So who needs to fill and sign, you or others? I'm gonna say you. And I can zoom in a little bit more there. And I'll just put it at the top of page two. I'll go up to, it looks like a fountain pen, and then it says sign. And my name's already in there, but you could type it out. 
and it gives you a couple fonts to choose from. You could do your initials, and it gives you the option to type it, draw it, or add an image. So maybe there's a scan of somebody's signature that they prefer using their actual handwriting. You can apply that and then change style. Yeah, there's usually four different styles that you can apply. We can close this set of fill and sign tools, save our document. The last command we'll apply to this document is to encrypt it with a password. In the right sidebar, locate protect. We can protect using password, we can remove hidden information. Under the advanced options, let's go to encrypt with password. Are you sure you want to change the security on this document? Yes. So we've got a couple different options at the top here. Uh, the first one is just how do we want this document to be open? Do we want it to have to require a password to be able to open that document? For this lab, that is what we're going to do. So let's check that box. And then you'll see document open password then becomes open and we can apply our password here. So I asked for you to add in all lowercase mcc and I know it's a weak password but this is just for practice. Now I'm not going to have you do the second set of permissions but I want to talk about it for a second here. This gives you some additional options on what can be done with that document or not. You can restrict anybody else being able to edit it or print it, or maybe they can print it, but just at low resolution. Um, changes allowed, you can get more specific about what kind of changes are approved. Enabling copying of text, images, and other content. Um, or enabling text for screen reader devices for the visually impaired. So it does give you a lot more flexibility on exactly what you want to secure. I will uncheck that because we'll just do the document open for this assignment and I'll click OK. And it wants you to confirm what that password is, lowercase mcc, click OK. And it tells you that that security setting will not be applied until after you save the document. So you'll be able to continue to change those security settings until you close it. Let's click OK there. And we can close this document now. Do we want to save it? Yes. And we'll try out that security. And I see in the recent documents area, there's the PDF we were just working on. So I'm going to double click it to open it back up. And now it's requiring a password to open this document. So I'll do the lowercase mcc, click OK. And now I'm back into that document. So for this lab, you're going to submit this PDF that we made our edits to and make sure that it is named correctly. And I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. Thank you.